Hi everybody, Todd Martin here with The Walking Code. On May 16th at 9 o'clock a.m. San Diego time, I'm going to be doing my first live stream question and answer session. So I hope you'll all join me there so you can get your questions answered directly on anything pertaining to walking technique body mechanics, uh, me personally, or whatever you're interested in. I really hope you will join me and make that first YouTube live stream a very big success because I do hope to be able to do that as a regular thing on the channel to give you guys more feedback directly. I think it's easier to do that sometimes when we can communicate back and forth verbally rather than um, just through comments. Although the comments are very valuable and I do really appreciate when you ask questions through the comments, so please keep doing that. In the spirit of that upcoming live stream question and answer session, I'm going to do a little impromptu question and answer session to myself where I am going to ask myself questions that I think a lot of you people might be interested in out there. And so some questions I've had before and I think come up and seem like logical questions. Uh, one of them is gonna be about rotation. I talk a lot about rotation of the core when we walk. And one question I think some people have had is if there's so much rotation going on and if everything is contingent upon rotation, why can't you feel the rotation happening? I did answer this question a little bit in a previous video on rotation and the answer is this. You are rotating your body around your spine. So at one point, one side is going to be going forward and the other side is going to be going relatively backward at all times. And then we can switch off where the my left side is going forward. I release the forward motion on the right side. Now I move forward on the right, release the forward on the left. So this is the sort of rotation I'm talking about. And here when I'm sitting down in a fixed position where my spine is not moving, you can see the rotation. But when I do the same sort of action, but my spine is free to move forward, when I do the same rotational action, what happens is the rotation is taken up in the forward motion. And so you don't see the rotation around the spine because the spine is moving with the rotation. If we were fixed with the spine in a stable position, then you would see the rotation. So this is why it's sometimes difficult to feel the rotation happening unless you really exaggerate the rotation. But it absolutely is there. And what you want to do is make that rotation move the body in the direction that you're trying to move in. Another question that I think a lot of people have is about duck foot walking. And this is a challenge because it is so prevalent out there. And the duck foot walk where your feet are turned out like this is a real problem because it causes the weight to be distributed unequally over all of the joints in your lower body. And this is gonna cause wear and tear over time. So the question is, can you fix it? And that's a complicated answer, and I don't really know the answer for everybody. What I really want to focus on on the channel is mainly prevention, because if people were aware of the issue before it started, we could probably prevent almost all people from starting to walk with duck feet. But people develop abnormal movement patterns for one reason or another, and it's hard to tell what those reasons are. Uh, you know, if you've listened to me before, I think wearing flip-flops tri triggers people to walk with duck feet often. It is also a very slow and relaxed way of walking. So some people who want to walk really slowly start to develop duck feet because it changes your pattern of movement with less progression in a forward direction than, we, than when we walk normally. And so I believe just the ability or wanting to walk very slowly causes some people to walk with duck feet. I've noticed this in movies where actors will walk with duck feet when they're in a scene where they're walking very slowly. And then I wonder if that actor just has duck feet, but then I see the same actor in another scene in the movie where they're walking quickly and they're walking with their feet in a totally normal forward facing direction. So often the duck feet positioning of the feet 
is really a means of walking in a very slow fashion. And you can imagine a, an actor walking in front of a camera that's panning back slowly is trying to move as slowly as possible. And that would be one reason they might start to use the core motion that is going to slow them down and also consequently will turn their feet out at an angle. But people probably do that for all kinds of other reasons other than just being on a movie set and trying to walk slowly for the camera. But the ultimate effect is going to be the same in either situation and that is going to be ending up walking with duck feet. The problem with the duck feet is it's going to cause damage over time and it's going to be much easier to prevent that if you fix it and stop it from starting in the first place. But once duck feet have gone on for many 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 years or in some cases a person's almost entire lifetime, there is a point in time where the connective tissues and joints kind of become fixed in a certain way where it would become difficult to change things because you really have to stretch out and strengthen things that maybe have contractured into a position where they're very difficult to move. You know, I like, I like I have one hip that's less flexible than another hip in terms of external rotation. It doesn't affect my walking, but if I'm trying to do external rotation on my right hip, it doesn't move my like, like my left hip does. And it seems like it is a fixed thing. I would probably have to stretch for a long, long, long period of time uh, to ever try to improve that range of motion. And I imagine for people who walk with duck feet, eventually the the joints and structures can become somewhat fixed in a position where it can be difficult to correct and that's why it's so important to prevent the issue and that's why i'm trying to raise awareness of the problem and prevent it from happening when people are doing it just by lack of paying attention and so i i do believe that you can always work on things and make things better over time and that's what you should try to focus on don't try to force anything because it is possible to hurt yourself by forcing your body into a position then that, that it hasn't been in in many years and it might be unnatural for you because of the way you've been walking for a long period of time so when you're trying to correct something uh, you do have to have the awareness that you can't try to force something that is very unnatural but do try to practice things so you can move in a more positive direction over time now another way of looking at it I, I do believe that if you can stand comfortably with your feet facing in a forward direction I can't see a reason why you can't walk with your feet facing in a forward direction so that's probably a test that you can do for yourself if you're able to stand comfortably with the feet facing forward, then practice walking that way. It means your hips and everything are not fixed in a position where the feet are turned out. And so if you have difficulty doing that, if you can't stand with your feet facing forward, I think that's gonna present a bigger challenge. And then you're gonna to have to do more stretching and strengthening exercises in order to correct the duck feet positioning. So those are the two questions I wanted to ask and answer in this quick preview to a live stream question and answer session. So please do join me on May 16th, 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific time in San Diego time. And I will be looking forward to answering your questions. Go ahead and click on the notifications button or the bell to get notifications for my future videos. And that's also going to give you a notification for when I go live so you don't miss it. Also, you can go on the thumbnail for the live stream that's already up there and post comments under there so you can tell me what your questions are in advance and then that'll help me give you the best answer possible. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my channel and hopefully bringing awareness to other people about the importance of good walking technique. Have a great day.